How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. That's right, I'm here. Beautiful Kauai, Hawaii, on my rocking chair. I realize if you're watching in Twitch or YouTube, it's a little bit washed out, but you know what? It's the ambiance. I want to make sure everyone can see the palm tree, hear that bubbling brook in the background, the swimming pool. And we're here for a fun day today on the program. Because it's Tuesday, you know what that means? That means tonight we have got NXT 2.0. And boy, what a show we've got for NXT 2.0. We'll tell you the lineup for that show here today. But also, uh, because it is Tuesday, you know what that means. We've got the Raw report from last night. Raw was the fallout show from the Elimination Chamber, and yesterday was President's Day, so we haven't even talked about Elimination Chamber. I presume everybody knows what happened on the show. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't watch WWE, but we've got several matches announced for WrestleMania thus far, not the least of which is Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, champion versus champion, title versus title. We have Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's title. We've got Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. And yes, we have got a match, Rey Mysterio and Dominic. He will be facing Miz and his Miz Tari partner. We'll get to that as we do the Raw Report later on today. Because yes, we do the Raw Report here on Tuesdays. We can tell you about that. As well as, yes, we finally have brackets for the Women's Dusty Cup. They managed to find... They managed to find uh, 16 women, I guess. It's an eight, eight-team tournament going to be a hell of a tournament here ring of honor fourth individual announced for the inaugural hall of fame class we'll tell you about that drake maverick back with the wwe kurt angle talks about the storyline that never was and so much more back in a moment everybody observer live switch homies complaining about the crotch cam fine you got the leg cam now what's going on mike what's happening How's your vacation going? How was your President's Day? Did you celebrate all those presidents yesterday? I did, much like Bob Backlund would like. I I went and named them off all in order before I I could uh, give and and get autographs. Remember when he used to do that gimmick? He actually did that for real, kids. Forget about all these nice wrestling superstars now. No, Bob Backlund, if you wanted an autograph, would make you recite all of the presidents in a row before he would bless you with the... Ability to have a autograph from the former World Wrestling Federation champion. Well, you know, it's funny. I won't make you recite all the presidents to be blessed with a cameo by myself. I'll do it for the low price of $35. Man, all I've been doing is cameos, having the time of my life. So if you want one, F4W online on cameo. But that's another matter entirely. We got to talk about this. uh, We got to start with Elimination Chamber. Because we haven't talked about it. The show was two days ago. Did you guys watch it? No. Actually, it was three days ago because it was Saturday. My wife was just flabbergasted they were running a show on a Saturday. But here's what happened in case you missed it. Uh, Roman Reigns beat uh, Goldberg in six minutes with the dumbest finish. That uh, Speaking of cameo, by the way, somebody wanted me to do a cameo burying Reddit. And uh, I didn't really want to do it because I don't have anything against, you know, Reddit as a whole. It's just every now and then I'll go on Reddit and I'll see that there are certain people on Reddit that are actually profoundly, profoundly stupid. So I did the cameo and uh, apparently it's up on Reddit now. But the point of this is, so uh, the finish of this match was uh, Roman Reigns beating Goldberg with a guillotine after Goldberg in the guillotine rammed him into the corner, grabbed the ropes with both hands, but Romans held on, and then Goldberg fell down and uh, ended up going unconscious and uh, lost the match. So I was watching this, and I was thinking, how in God's name was that not a rope break? (laughs) Right? He rammed the dude into the corner and grabbed the ropes with both hands, and the ref was just like, eh, whatever. Whatever. And Roman held on and then and then beat the guy. So I was informed, okay, and this was after I did this Reddit uh, cameo, so I wish I would have known this before I did the cameo. I am told that there are people on Reddit who try to claim with a straight face that the rule is that you have to hold onto the ropes for five seconds before it counts as a rope break. 
Can anyone really actually be that stupid? Can you help me here? That's not the rule. The rule is that when you touch the ropes, it's a rope break, and the other guy has five seconds to break the hold or he will be disqualified, right? I realize there's no real rules in WWE, but am I wrong here? How many times have we seen a guy crawl to the ropes and they put one finger on the ropes and that counts as a rope break immediately? So anyway, finish was stupid, but Roman Reigns beat the Goldberg. We had uh, Bianca Belair winning the Women's Chamber. They had a 15-minute chamber match because, uh, you know, they wanted the show done in two hours and 50 minutes. And so they had to rush all of the matches because we got to make sure we get all the video packages on. So uh, Bianca beat Alexa, Dewdrop, Liv Morgan, Nikki Ash, and Rhea Ripley. Alexa Bliss is still a schoolgirl, so all the therapy didn't work. And, of course, the payoff to the therapy was she had to carry the doll everywhere to remain cured. And then she goes to Saudi Arabia, and she doesn't carry the doll. Because why would she? That's ridiculous. So Bianca won, and it'll be Bianca trying to get a revenge on uh, Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Naomi and Ronda Rousey, with one arm tied behind her back, beat Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. Sonya allegedly had a broken arm, but then she realized that she didn't have a broken arm because these people are so stupid they didn't realize that that just buried Ronda Rousey's finisher. It's actually not a very good arm bar. Sonya was pretending that her arm was hurt. But uh, Naomi and Ronda Rousey won. Ronda Rousey facing Charlotte at Mania. Drew McIntyre beat Madcap Moss. Falls count anywhere. It was a good match. Uh, Madcap landed right on his head, which is the most notable part of this match, unfortunately. And uh, apparently, allegedly, they claim he's okay. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But Drew McIntyre won after uh, literally attempting to decapitate Happy Corbin. He was almost decappy Corbin after this match. Waited all weekend for that one. Becky Lynch beat Lita. Match was better than I expected. 12 minutes. Uh, Lita got the big pop for the twist of fate in the moonsault. Uh, Becky kicked out of her finish and then just hit her with her finish and pinned her. That was the end of this match. Usos beat... Actually, they didn't beat the Viking Raiders. They beat up the Viking Raiders. And uh, we had no match. Uh, both teams flew all the way to Saudi Arabia, 36 total hours, so they could do an angle. Because we have to make sure we have enough time for our video packages. And in the main event, Brock Lesnar beat Lashley, AJ, Austin Theory, Riddle, and Seth Rollins. When uh, Brock Lesnar F5'd and pinned AJ, Theory, Riddle, and Rollins, all like geeks. Uh, Bobby Lashley was taken out due to an alleged injury, a head injury. He actually needs shoulder surgery because he was dropped on his shoulder 15 times at the Royal Rumble. Uh, they told us afterwards that he was fine. That sound familiar? Turns out he wasn't fine. So it is Lesnar and Roman Reigns, title versus title, champion versus champion at WrestleMania. And uh, that was a show. It's a very by-the-numbers show. It was just there. There was nothing horrible there was nothing great. It was uh, three hours on your Saturday morning. And, Mike, what did you think of this show? I thought it was a very pedestrian show, like you mentioned. It was uh, very surgical, much like their house shows are. You know, two and a half hours in, boom and out. The issue with this one, it was obviously with the Viking Raiders not being on there. They didn't get their times right. And... They show those video packages. We see them every single week get compiled and be added to with what happened the week before, and they beat them into the ground, and I get it. There are probably people that only watch the pay-per-views and the special events, so I guess it gets those people caught up on what's going on, but they're so superfluous if you are... If you even watch a full show, you know, leading into the, the pay-per-view, you know everything that's going on. So it is way too much of that. But uh, those Saudi shows, they are a lot of big names. People come back. They, they flash it up and everything. But it really is just a, you know, just a way to kind of boost things to get to what actually matters next. And what actually matters next, obviously, is WrestleMania, which I've heard is stupendous this year. Yeah, it's stupendous. That's the uh, that's the gimmick. By the way, uh, some fella here goes, I'm just showing off on my vacation now. Listen, 
I went to Hawaii. You want me to just be in an empty blank room? Like, what's the point? <laughs> if WWE ran a show on the moon, okay, would you like them to be in a giant glass bubble where you can look out and actually see the universe for this special show on the moon? Or do you want to put them in a regular arena and just set it up like every other Raw so it doesn't even matter? Huh? They You're go to rubbish. Club Lavella and build an arena so it looked like every other show. They did the show by the pool. That was the point of this show. You're rubbing it into everyone that you happen to be in paradise while you do radio shows. Yeah, and I am work in paradise. Over over. <laughs> I paid a lot of money for it. You think I came here free? <laughs> and you're working. I am working. I'm giving you a show. This show's free, by the way. No one's even paying anything for this one. I'm giving you a we free show from Hawaii, and this bloke's complaining about it. Get out of here. Stop giving us those legs for those of you who are actually watching this right now. No, you're going to get them legs. Ugh. My God. Gray hair on those, too. Look at that. No, there's not. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, you know oh, what it is? Must... It's, it's my, my body is so tan right now that, is uh, that it? the uh, hair looks, looks white. I, wait, wait till the Brian Vinny show tonight. I talk about the uh, whale watching trip that I went on. <laughs> I'm on a very padded seat right now. <laughs> so anyway, tonight is NXT. Oh, no. <laughs> tonight is NXT 2.0. Yeah, I sat on the wooden part of the boat, and it was a speedboat. And I bounced up and down on that boat for two hours. Mm. My ass is so flat right now. Oh, my Lord. And then poor White Paisley vomited flat. over the side of the boat. Got seasick. <laughs> thought you were going to say something like you got hemorrhoids or something. Then you said the wood. No, I thought maybe you got like a like splinter. But I did learn I did learn that before you go on a speedboat, what you don't want to do is get two scoops of ice cream and an extra supersized cupcake. I had a I had a rough first hour on that boat. You back. paid for this with our subscription money. Well, of course I did. You think I you think I robbed Hawaii? You think I stole this trip? No. Oh. This wasn't some of that at, sweet Sports Illustrated money, bro. If you work at the library, you're not allowed to enjoy your vacation because you you paid for it with money you made working. Then this guy goes, "We paid for this vacation." Yeah, you did. So here it is. Would you rather I was in an empty room? You paid for it, so I'm showing you what it looks like. Man. Now, let's I talk think, about the news. I think some people are just hoping trickle-down economics uh, would work out a little bit better. You know? Some, some people. What is this, the 80s? What are we, we, what are we having, tensions before. with Russia or something? Maybe. All right, listen. So uh, Tonight on NXT 2.0, we have got uh, <laughs> the debut of Nikita Lyons. You guys know who <laughs> Nikita Lyons is? <laughs> she's, Lacey, she's the new Lacey Evans. She's their latest woman that has 15 gimmicks. She is a uh, pop star. She is a kickboxer. She is a uh, twerker. That's what I got out of the video. <laughs> oh, no. and, uh, and also a wrestler. She's wow. got like four gimmicks. She debuts tonight. Uh, we've got uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Tommaso Ciampa. The winner gets Braun Breaker in a championship match. So that should be Ziggler. We've got LA Knight versus Grayson Waller. I feel like they've built this up for a while, but I'm not that into it. And then we have two matches for the Women's Dusty. Are you guys aware of the brackets for the Women's Dusty? I'm going to read them to you, okay? You're going to think that this is like some cameo bit, but these are the actual brackets, okay, for the Women's Dusty Classic. Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray versus Lash Legend and Amari Miller. <laughs> Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro versus Ivy Nile and my new favorite name in NXT 2.0, Tatum Paxley. <laughs> Where do they come up with these names? That's, that's a new one. I'm going to have fun with that one for a while. Tatum Paxley is this person's name. On the other side of the bracket, we have Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada versus Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai. Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai. Wendy Chu is a baby face everybody loves. Dakota Kai is a heel who talks to herself. And Wendy Chu naps. That's that yeah. team. Well, hey, look, you, then, uh, you've said it many times. You've got to get these people ready for the main roster. That's what this NXT 2.0 is all about. Wacky relationships. How many times do we see that? Tag team partners, can they coexist? Can Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai coexist? No, the question is, can, can Dakota Kai coexist with Dakota Kai? That's going to be the issue here. 
because uh. she's she talks to herself. Which, by the way, that makes it a, a three-person team. That's not fair. Maybe she can be and the then, special uh, guest referee for uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. They can all have their you know issues amongst themselves within themselves. And then we got uh, uh, Ulyssa Leon and Valentina Faraz, mm. who, uh, based on what I've seen so far on the show, are also twerkers. There's a lot of them in this tournament. They will be facing Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez. The funniest storyline in all of NXT is Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez. You want me to recap it, everybody? Have you been watching the show? Okay. So Raquel Gonzalez, she won last year, right? Am I wrong about this? I think she did. Yeah, it was her in Dakota, right? Am I wrong, everybody? No one knows? Okay, anyway. So uh, Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez, I believe, won last year. And then this year... Uh, Raquel Gonzalez wanted absolutely nothing to do with this tournament. She doesn't want to be in the tournament. She doesn't want to team with anybody. She wants nothing to do with the women's Dusty, okay? Uh, uh, Cora Jade wants to be in the Dusty, but uh, she's a loser that has no friends. Nobody wants to team with her. So she is trying to convince Raquel to be her partner. Raquel's like, you're a skinny geek. I don't want to be your partner. This is not happening. So so, uh, Cora says, I'm going to prove that I am not a skinny geek. I'm going to prove that I'm a winner and that the two of us could win this tournament together. So she challenges her to a match, okay? So they do this match, and Raquel Gonzalez beats the bloody pus out of Cora Jade. She obliterates her, and she pins her with a choke bomb clean in the middle of the ring like a geek. And then Raquel goes, you know what? Now that I think about it, we might make a great team. That was proven in this match where I just squashed you. So now they're going to be a team. But now, as it turns out, Cora Jade is lazy and weak. And if you think I'm making any of this up, I swear to God, watch the show. So Raquel goes to Cora's, uh, by the way, tiny little one-bedroom apartment, because no one's a star in NXT 2.0. She goes to her tiny little one-bedroom apartment at 5 a.m., and she wants her to train. But Cora Jade's character is lazy. She doesn't want to get up and train. So Raquel has to drag her out of the house. She has to force her to exercise. We got to go running. She wants her to do push-ups and all this other stuff that they do. And, of course, Cora Jade wants nothing to do with this. And Raquel makes her suffer. And then at the end, Cora Jade, like, sarcastically goes, I can't wait to do it again. That is the storyline for this team in the Women's Dusty. So, of course, they're probably going to go to the end and, uh, I presume, lose. I don't know who's going to win this. I mean, uh, it's a bunch of makeshift teams and, and green green folk. Mm. Who do you think is going to win this, Mike? Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez. But here's a problem with your theory. You may be right, but here's a problem. Mm-hmm. Raquel was never even going to be in this tournament. Raquel so? was going to go to the main roster, and, like, they couldn't come up with women, and so they're like, God, we got to bring her back for a while. So, literally, she's part of a makeshift, unplanned team. She could still win, but, well, I mean, if they had a plan, God forbid, uh, she would not have been in the... Uh, that wouldn't have been in the works. Like, but ultimately, maybe like, I, yeah, whatever I think all of this is going to end with Raquel Gonzalez defending her belt in a three-way against Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray, and... That belt probably, in my opinion, should come off Raquel Gonzalez, and she, at some point, right after WrestleMania, say, should be up on the main roster. I mean, that would make sense to me. I don't know what else she's doing down there. You know, the storylines they have going on are a whole separate issue, but I would figure that's probably a good direction because she's just spinning her wheels. And Io Shirai, I know people will say, well, God, why isn't she up on the main roster yeah, yeah, I, I would like to maybe see her there too, but she can serve a lot of purpose. Same thing with Kaylee Ray being around this roster that desperately needs to be led for, I mean, look at the people that are in this tournament, for heaven's sakes. Lash Legend is in this tournament. Yeah, Lash Legend and Amari Miller. Well, Ivy, Nile and Tatum Paxley. That's her name. Why <laughs> Why are J.C. Jane and Gigi Dolan not in this thing? They're the champions. So? 
Because the winner of the Dusty Cup gets a title shot. Oh, is that it? Okay. I, I honestly for completely forgot what the stipulation. I thought they just posed with the Dusty Cup and you honored the dream. And, you know, there's going to be a, a the obligatory shot of him in polka dots, even though he hated that. And there you go. Who knows? Maybe now this year, though, the way this thing has been strung out for so long, maybe Cody can be there and present the cup to the winner of the Dusty Cup. Drake Maverick. Remember Drake Maverick? Remember they mm-hmm. fired him, and then he did that. Uh, might have been a cameo, actually. And then they rehired him. And Ugh. then they, they fired him Terrible. again. And now they appear to have rehired him again. Drake Maverick reportedly back in WWE under a creative role. PW Insider reported Maverick. Real names, uh, real name James Curtin has been working behind the scenes on Raw on the creative team starting three to four weeks ago. He was released by WWE in November as part of the talent cuts. What an unforgiving job this poor bloke's got right now. But you know what? He's got a job. So, best of luck. Drake Maverick's super nice guy. And, uh, <laughs> what? Jeez, what a sad world we live in where it's like, man, congratulations on having a job, man. Sad. sad. Well, it situation. is. He's been fired twice. Sad state of affairs. Of course, affairs I'm going to congratulate him on having a job. I don't know if I'm congratulating him on going and back you know to what's the place they fired him By the twice, way, Mike, boy. Look, hey, I would this congratulate guy, him more if on this a, guy on gets a his job spot. And he keeps his job for like five years or whatever, and he uses the money earned in his job to go on vacation. You know what I'm not going to do? Mock him. <laughs> yeah, Drake, but you earned this money at your job. <laughs> You horrible person. How uh, dare you go on vacation with money you earned? Don't buy a house, Drake. Don't do it. Things are always a little bit touchy for you. Let's we'll see how long you last this well, time Well, no, if around. he can buy it outright. Well, no. Well, no. Hell no. Why do you want to do that in a place that's fired you twice? You know what I'm saying? Like, you no, know, if he pays for it outright, it doesn't matter if he's fired. No, it's, it's paid a, off. It's a matter of ex- just, just using the expression. You know Brian. anything about money? Jesus. Uh, Kurt Angle has explained the storyline that he was recently supposed to make his return to the company for. He stated on an episode of his Kurt Angle Show podcast last month, he'd been contacted by WWE to return. It was a three-week program that was dropped at the last second. Maybe he should have a word with Drake Maverick. It said here that he was going to be involved in the feud between uh, Alpha Academy and RK Bro. He would be the special guest referee for a match between the teams at Elimination Chamber, but the matchup didn't even end up happening in the pay-per-view. You know, he could always still do that refereeing gig. I guess they figure, you know, we may as well uh, pay him. We didn't cut a deal, he said. Whole program got canceled the last second. Yeah, so it never happened, he added, in case you were concerned about what that meant, that it got canceled the last second. That Thanks, means Kurt. it never happened. It's unfortunate, but, you know, sometimes they have different plans for these guys. There's nothing you can do about it. I always love all these guys that are like... Man, if I got fired from the same place twice and they wanted to hire me again, I'd only do it for a significant signing bonus. I'm sure Drake Maverick's going up to Vincent going, I know you're offering me a job, but brother, I'm not doing it unless you pay me way more. <laughs> Dude, if you get fired from a job twice and they offer to bring you back and pay you money, you're telling me your preference is to just be broke, not work. Obviously, you could do something else. But, like, if Drake Maverick got fired twice and he was offered, like, huge money by AEW, for example, or whatever, he would have gone there, right? I'm not saying the guy has no other options, but if he was making six figures, let's say he was making $100,000 a year from WWE and they fired him, and then he was making 100000 from WWE and they fired him again, and then they're going to offer him $100,000 to work in creative, you, uh, dear uh, Twitcher, are telling me, nah, not unless they give me 150. I'm not well, going to do it. I'm going to get that on, money. Depends on what else you're doing, Brian, because you're not maybe going to max out that entire deal because they'll go ahead and fire you like they did the last couple times around. Then you're So make again. the money until they fire you. That is, look, that's yes, that is one way to look at it. You're absolutely right. You don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face, but I think it also comes down to how you leave a place as well and how they treated you on the way out because there is a, much like Drake Maverick, we have not... I, to me, I've never heard of anybody you know, disliking Drake Maverick or them being a situation where he did something or they did something so out of line in his departure. 
So it's a lot easier to come back. Now, for other people, if they left and ran their mouth a lot and did a lot of talk and maybe even started up their own other promotion and smashed a, a throne and things like that, those people who come back, those are the people that tend to get looked at with a little bit of a different eye, okay? So I... Again, it's how you leave a place, how they treated you on the way out, and what your relationship was like with them to wear. But again, also, too, it's his life. He can do whatever the hell he wants with it. But Yeah, you know. he wants to work for WWE. He wants to work in creative and yeah. make his money, so he should be happy for the guy. It's like someone goes, well, you know, uh, man, why, why would uh, – let's say they, they wanted to bring back Braun Strowman, and they're like, you know, we'll give you a million dollars. Oh, man, I wouldn't do that unless I got a no cut. You wouldn't go yeah. back unless you got bro. Listen, let's take yeah, let's take Drake Maverick. You're not working okay? from a, a, a place of strength. That's what the bottom line is. Even Braun Strowman, you know, they cut of his. Of course, money. you're not. You're working for WWE. No. So here's the deal. So okay, if you believe that uh, WWE can say we'll offer you Drake two hundred fifty thousand dollars to do creative, okay, and you're telling me that you think that uh, Drake could just say no and go get another job, wherever. Okay, fine. If that is the case, then go and make your check every week on your $250,000 deal, and then when they fire you again, go get that other job that you could have got before. Why would you say no to huge money? Because you're scared you might get fired. It's absolutely ridiculous take the money until you're fired and then go take the other job that you were gonna take because oh i'm not going back unless i get a no cut deal it's wwe anybody can be cut at any time they cut shane mcmahon for crying out loud you know what you're in for if you want to work there go make your money and if you get fired then you get fired but no one is gonna hold vince over a barrel and go bro you know, this creative job sounds good, but, man, I ain't doing it for this. you got to give me a no-cut creative deal. You just cut yourself is what you did when you make a they demand like that. They even bring you back again. You know, these types of things. We're dealing in a fantasy world with anybody that brings this up. Like, you can, you know, Cody Rhodes ain't getting a no-cut, you know, let alone <laughs> Drake Maverick coming back. You know, hey, you want to do some things in the office? <laughs> no, I can't do that. Come on, man. You know, that's just silliness to, to, to think about there. So, I don't know. D done with all that. This guy here. This guy here. I'm going to just, I'll, I'll this do this guy. one personally. You know what this guy needs? What's he that? needs a cameo from me. Anyway, the Raw Report. Wait, before you say the Raw Report, too, again, just to, to say this about Mustafa Ali. If he were to leave, get fired, be released, and then go back... OK, you know, that's a situation because of how he has talked about that place, how he is, you know, what his feelings are and wanting to leave there. If he were to leave, go test the waters, then come back because they said, hey, hey, you want to come back in? That would be an issue where somebody can raise some sort of flag or something like that or have something to say about it. But, I mean, with Drake Maverick, again, the situation is completely different. And anybody saying they're going to give demands to WWE when they've been on this cost cutting spree. I mean, that's just silliness. I actually had a guy on there that said that I was a mark and you were a realist in this situation. Bro. What? Dude. What did, wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out, time out. What, what is that supposed to mean here? Oh, that I have a lot no of idea things that can be how true. things work in the real world. Bro, you want to know how things work in WWE? I'm telling you right now. I'm happy that the place you work offers a signing bonus. I'm happy that the place <laughs> you work gives you some form of leverage. Bro, who's the realist here? Who's the mark? We're talking about WWE. You ain't getting some big signing bonus. You're not getting some no-cut deal. You're going to get a complete and total one-sided contract, and you either take it or leave it. That's it. Golly. <laughs> hey, but, hey, before we do the Raw Report, you want to get into this New Japan Cup? No. <laughs> Raw Report. 15 minutes, Dave went over every single match in a 48-man New Japan Cup. It's like, bro, one guy loses that you thought was going to win, and it's all for naught! <laughs> all right, here we go. Elimination Chamber. We had a long segment with Brock Lesnar that I swear to God was all to announce that he was going to be on the other show on Friday. That's what this was. Do you like his Western wear? Actually, I do. I love this new bra. It's pretty good. <laughs> this guy's a man after my own heart. 
Also, there's going to be a uh, – this is a good one. So uh, Lashley, they knew he couldn't wrestle, so they just false advertised him for Elimination Chamber and took him out of the match. So now they're flat-out false advertising Madison Square Garden. But at least this time at the end of the show, they actually – the announcers go – and there ain't no chance Lashley's going to be at Madison Square Garden. So Lesnar faces a mystery man at Madison Square Garden that Heyman says could take the title off of him. Who in God's name could this be that they have not buried six ways from Sunday? We'll find out on, on March 5th. We had a Seth Rollins-Kevin Owens interview. They're in the main event tonight. If they win, it will be a three-way in two weeks with RK Bro versus the Alpha Academy. And, uh, spoiler, that is exactly what happened. Alpha Academy beat the Street Profits. This match is pretty good. Uh, everybody looked good in the match, and uh, Gable held down Ford's foot after Otis fell on top of him when Ford's, uh, Ford tried a uh, body slam. Don't try to slam a big, fat guy. That's the uh, lesson I've learned after watching wrestling for many years. Unless you have 24-inch pythons, then you maybe can pull it off in the biggest show of all time. Tommaso Ciampa and Finn Balor beat Ziggler and Rude. Uh, this is to build up the Tommaso Ciampa-Ziggler match. I think that Chama, uh, Ciampa here is only doing NXT, and they just did this to kind of build up the uh, the match, but he did totally uh, dye all of the gray out of his beard, so maybe we'll be seeing more of him on the main roster. We had a Miz TV segment where they announced that uh, Miz's partner at WrestleMania will be Logan Paul. These dummies figured out that this guy ain't going to be a babyface, so he's total heel. And uh, they beat up uh, Ray and Dominic, gave them both skull-crushing finales. And uh, should be a pretty fun, simple match. Tons of heat for Miz and, uh, and uh, you know, what's his name? Logan Paul. So, you know what? I know people are going to disagree with this, but I'm liking this Mania card. I mean, maybe I'm the only one that's, uh, you know, observing Observer Live right now, but I kind of like it. We had uh, Rhea Ripley beating Nikki Ash because they have absolutely no idea what to do with anybody. So they were like, hmm, let's do this match for the 50th time. Rhea won two minutes. Damian Priest beat Shelton Benjamin. This is just classic WWE. Shelton's a hometown guy. So let's put him in a match with Damian Priest. And A, we'll beat him. And B, we're going to get Damian Priest booed. But we don't want him booed. So we're going to have him cut a babyface promo after the match. But they still booed him because he beat Shelton Benjamin in his hometown. And then uh, afterwards, they announced next week it's Finn Balor versus Damian Priest uh, for the North American. No, what is this? What belt does he have? United States title. It's not the North American title. 24-7 segment. They had a great segment last week. And it turns out somebody had a bright idea for Valentine's Day. And then they were like, we got to figure out how to get it back to the boring stuff that we were doing before. So Reggie comes out, and he wants to apologize to Dana Brooke, and he lays down in the middle of the ring to let her pin him. But she covers him, and he kicks out. Because apparently his character's like a total jerk now. And so then he lets her do it again, and he kicks out. Now she's getting really mad. And so he goes through it a third time, but she kisses him, and he's so smitten that he gets pinned. So Dana is now the useless 24-7 champion again that nobody can do anything with because she's a woman and they're all men. Except Tamina, but they won't allow them to touch. So, whatever. I mean, it was kind of creative, but they just undid all of the great stuff they did last week. We had a Bianca-Becky segment. Bianca was absolutely a superstar in this segment. She's just the greatest. And uh, this led to a match with Dewdrop, a match I liked. I like these Dewdrop matches. Uh, they had a good 11-minute match. Second time they've done it. Fans got into it at the end again. And uh, Bianca did a bunch of power moves, pinned her with a KOD. I like this a lot. And it's the classic WWE booking, you know. Babyface has to beat a giant leading to, uh, to WrestleMania. Which I know people were uh, suggesting that Brock's opponent could be Omas. And uh, I don't think it's impossible. Because I expect that on March 4th, Vince is going to wake up and say... Well, give me the Big Show. And someone's going to have to tell him that uh, Big Show's the other company. You know why that He's also go, works, what? too? You know why that also works, too? Lesnar doesn't really have to work a full match. You get the visual of all the social media coming out of that, of him doing that to Omas in Madison Square Garden. So, you know, it, it's not maybe the greatest idea in the world, but it's certainly one that's going to get you some buzz and attention. Then we had the uh, Edge promo. Edge came out. And uh, by the way, twice here on the show, 
they uh, dropped hints for Cody. Uh, Miz said that his partner was going to be dashing, and uh, Edge mentioned undeniable, both references to Cody, neither of which got absolutely any reaction whatsoever from the undeniable Cody Rhodes. Yeah, remember he go, he went from uh, un un uh, what was it un something to undeniable. No, he was the when he was Doctor Doom there when he was ugly or whatever when he broke his nose. That that era of Cody. Well, they, they had the dashing era. I thought unde- undeniable was like his new uh, undesirable to undeniable. That's his new catchphrase. Hmm. So anyway, the point of this is like I'm not saying that Cody's Cody will absolutely mean something for WWE, but I think people do need to remember that uh, we got totally different audiences here. And uh, this hardcore WWE audience, you know, they they stand up for WWE. They ain't going to be sitting here uh, getting these inside jokes. In fact, if I recall correctly, uh, there was also an MJF reference on Raw a while ago, and, and nobody reacted Brian, to that one at all. remember how we were talking about, you were talking about the rules and how they don't matter with the rope breaks? Because a lot of WWE fans don't care. They care about some so many things that they, the most passionate fans, care about. Most other wrestling fans are complete opposites. And when it comes to Cody, for a lot of those fans, he was still the, the, the dashing guy. He was Stardust the last time around. And for some of them, what he did in AEW made May not actually matter whatsoever. And finally, we had Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens beating Randy Orton and Riddle in a very good main event, which means that Rollins and Owens have been added to the match. It is now a three-way in two weeks. And uh, that's your Raw report. We'll see how it does back on USA. Back Wrestling Observe Knee Live. Huh? See that thing? By the way, this afternoon, normally uh, Lance is on at uh, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. But uh, that's changing today. It'll be... Oh, man. How am I going to figure this out? It'll (laughs) be... He's going to be on at 2 o'clock Hawaii time, which Uh is 4 Pacific, which is 7 Eastern. Did I get it? Huh? I think so. I think I did get it. So uh, that'll be live for our uh, top tier YouTube subscribers. So make sure you you check that out for all of the the shows. And uh, then Vinny and I... I'm not sure what time we're going to be on tonight, but uh, check my Twitter at Brian Alvarez because Vinny actually is taking a red eye out of Hawaii tonight. Uh, his flight is like at 11 Hawaii time, which is Bridget going to or is it just Vinny out of there? Pacific. No, she's going. So they land at like 6 a.m. Pacific tomorrow morning. Holy smokes. Wow. So, uh, yeah, they're out of here tonight. Rodney's out of here tomorrow. And then uh, we'll be here till Sunday. So you'll have more on location shows although we are moving to a different place after uh tomorrow so i'm gonna have to figure out mike may be doing the show tomorrow because our checkout time is right when this show ends so i have to find out how uh militant they're gonna be are they gonna send folks here to lock the doors right at 11 so anyway we'll figure it out but uh, i want to thank all of you for listening here today yeah even you guys on twitch top tier youtube subscribers all my friends and enemies Check out my cameo at 4W Online. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.